So what does the new leadership of the Democratic Alliance really mean for the brand of the party? And are these the leaders that will hold the party in good stead for the 2024 elections? Well, to answer that question, we are joined by business lecturer at Cape Peninsula University of Technology, Dr. M.K. Zwagala, who also uh, comments as a political party brand analyst. Dr. Zwagala, good morning to you. Welcome to the agenda. Morning, Good morning to you, to your viewers. Yeah, as John Steenhazen has described it as the leadership that essentially describes their moonshot pact, their launch into the 2024 elections. Uh, tell me if you agree uh, with that view. But I think any surprises for you? Were you expecting that this would be such a landslide election uh, for John Steenhazen? Uh, not at all, Valid. Look, the, the, the status quo remains. I think this really depicts the. Um, uh, that our democracy, it's at its infancy stage. You know, we, we're a growing democracy, quite a young democracy. So consequently, our politics um, are still growing. Uh, they're still um, uh, based on race, based on race identity, uh, race resonance, right? Uh, and it's not just the, 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 the Demo democratic alliance I mean, that is a culprit in this. Uh, you can mention other few political parties in, in the South African context. So no surprise that at all um, the status quo has remained uh, for the day. What does this mean for them in 2024? Do you think this is the leadership that is able to uh, sway the electorate to look closer at the DA as an alternative? Uh, I wouldn't be convinced that it look uh, the DA's brand positioning is based on what I call South Africanism, right? We speak about one South Africa, uh, we're all united, we don't see color, we don't see race, which totally contradicts the outlook of their, I mean, of their, of their leadership, their newly elected leadership, right? So I think uh, that is not uh, that is not convincing, that is not believable because um, uh, they, for everyone, for races, but that is certainly, it does not show in who occupies what roles. Hence I'm saying, it, it's it's not only the DA, uh, the, the, the four or five other political parties uh, that are formed based on race relatedness, race identity, as I've said. Um, so going to 2024, I think the status quo remains. Um, however, my concern with them is that they're very externally driven, right? So mm. it, it seems as if uh, the, the emergence to governance will be reliant on, uh, uh, on an ANC dropping below 50, on, on an EFF that dropped below the 10. Yeah, so they're, they're really externally driven, and that is a worry for, for a big political party brand uh, like the DA. Yeah, let's talk about the, the options that really were on the table for the Democratic Alliance at this elective Congress of theirs, right? You, you talk about the status quo really remaining the same, but what would it have done uh, had we seen Mpopalazi rise to um, higher levels of strata or strata perhaps at the Democratic Alliance? For the brand, particularly. Look, I think um, and not much would have changed, right? Because remember, <laughs> under the leadership of Helen Zilla, where uh, the, the day was really stable, it was growing, right? She did explore uh, this black face uh, image, so to speak, and it, it did work to a certain point up until we saw a, a, a black leader exodus. From the DA, so I don't think uh, uh, Paladzi being uh, remember even the same DA sabotage as a mayor of, of Johannesburg. I don't think any uh, uh, different face would have changed uh, will change anything uh, for the for the DA. You remember their constituency. Remember their audience. Um, you remember what happened uh, when they were led by Musa Maimane in 20, 20, 2019 election. Uh, mm. that they declined by two percent, which really speaks to. Who the DA? Who are their audience? And I, I, I'm, I believe, and I believe that the DA really wants to take uh, the freedom front plus posture, right? Where we speak to a very specific audience, a very minority, and that could be completely fine. As I'm saying, because the, their ideological um, um, orientation is questionable. Uh, their identity is very incoherent and inconsistent with what they speak to be standing for. So I don't think uh, Paul Palazzi's emergence would have led to any uh, uh, different results in 2024. I'm not suggesting that John Stenhazen at, at the helm will, will, will do any better because race politics are entrenched in, in South African politics. And for me, that is a worry.
All right, just before I let you go, now you've got uh, the Democratic Alliance that essentially has their leadership in place. Now I suppose the focus is going to be in getting ready for the 2024 race. What's the messaging that they need to have for them to be strengthened next year? I think they need to tread carefully with the language around uh, the coalition uh, partners, right? We're in a coalition environment and to be uh, declaring uh, very prominent political parties as public enemies uh, in, a po in a coalition uh, environment, I think that's very myopic. Um, Day wants to talk to like-minded uh, political parties. Look, the ANC and the EFF are the biggest oppositions, uh, I mean, alongside the Day, of course, uh, in that order. Now, to be dismissing political coalitions um, I think for me that that is very myopic and it could prove to be costly for the day brand come 2024. Yeah. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, Dr. M.K. Zwagala, the political party brand analyst, uh, speaking to us there from the Western Cape.